We are broadcasting and very shortly we'll be live. We are so hello everyone and welcome to adventure on so many levels. We're going to play some Dungeons and Dragons. Woo! Yes. And D. <laughs> uh, I am Christiana Ellis and I am the dungeon master. Our players tonight, Jenny Meltzer as Zaylene, although her little uh, label name tag there is wrong at the moment. I'll fix that. <laughs> well, regardless, you know, I'm just sitting here thinking about death. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we also have Starla Hutchton as Carolina Swift. Hello, friends. Uh, we have Paul Fisher as Zinhorn Windborn. Good evening. I'm trying to introduce at the same time that I type, which is type something that is different than what I'm saying that, believe it or not, is difficult to do. But we also have yeah. Jude Schubert as sequential. Hello, hello. And last but not least, Mark Kilfoyle as Nedry Shiny Rock. I'm really starting to wonder if bringing sequential here was actually a questionable decision. Mm. Uh, you also have accompanying your party, Buster, the gray render, currently um, pocket size, uh, tucked away in your magic tower that is likewise pocket sized. You also have Evan Cresseldown, former, you know, local uh, hometown spy turned uh, convert to the cause. Now he likes to stab things with a sword in the name of you guys, the pocket protectors. We yeah, we don't know what the icon. cause is, but it's some kind of cause. Yeah. He's here for it. <laughs> It's you, an effect, you, it's not a cause. You sold him <laughs> on the idea that there was big, dangerous things happen that, happening that needed to be uh, opposed, mm -hmm. and he's he's bought in, so. Yeah, and down with the Empire, Evan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. that's problem. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, last time on so many levels, your Warforged friend Sequential had been uh, in diagnostic mode, requiring connection to the main terminal and you as you explored the ground level and then the first basement level of this observatory workshop place that seems to be where sequential was originally constructed you fought your way through some uh hazards uh mostly uh in the form of various horrible thing creatures that fought you uh, but you made it to a workshop where Sequential plugged himself in and has recovered not only his, his full range of functions and features, but also now has the knowledge contained in his, his creator's uh, notebooks and some memories that he had been asked to, in, to suppress originally, uh, now remembering that his employer had used a Dinutherian ritual to create him, but realized too late, perhaps, that a price must be paid. And rather than give Sequential up, he decided to go pay the price himself in some mysterious fashion that you don't fully have all the information on. But that is the last time you saw him, he has not returned. So, uh, that's where we left things off with all of you down here in this, this workshop. Pocket protectors, what would you like to do? Mm -hmm. I believe we were staring at Sequential who had just yelled Eureka. Right. Eureka! <laughs> yes. I, I don't think I'm a weapon. Oh, good. How do you feel? Are you okay? Did anything change? I, um... I got a bunch of memories back. Is oh, that that's good. Good. It has to do. Or is it bad? <laughs> How would it well, be bad? Why not? Well. And I'd pretty much share, you know, what what I what you had because you had so eloquently put last episode mm -hmm. um, <laughs> of now I know why he left, and <clears throat> um, that's kind of more concerning now because I mean. You know, I thought he might be in danger just because it had been so long. And now I know that he was walking into into the unknown with this possible price to pay. And if, I mean, if it, you know, literally takes life to make life, then 
I don't know that he'll ever come back. Uh, where, where, sorry, just where I'll, you, <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I, I'll just uh, add also that you now have access to slash can read all of right. his notes on this facility, which he did not originally build, <coughs> but did repair and modify once he found it. And so you have all of his notes on how it operates. Yeah. And so those are some big answers that that clearly all of the magic's linked. It's he literally used the Denethorian magic to create me. But this, you know, his workshop was a found workshop, not, you know, it's not his design. He was just learning. We've got do a head start now on the learning we can build off of, but. Do you think he maybe went to the the island? Maybe he went to dinner there? That's the only thing I can think of. I mean. Well, then. That's where I would go, I guess, suppose now, knowing what we know now. Well, they made a telescope to look like through whatever magical barrier they'd put up, right? M maybe we can use the telescope to see if he's there. I don't know that I really want to look. It doesn't sound like a very pleasant place. <clears throat> no, but to look before we jump for once, I guess that would be good. <laughs> that would be very worthy. It would be a first. <laughs> it was going to be a weapon, which you put an end to didn't rebuild those components or try to finish any of that off. Yeah. I, I, I mean, it sounds to me like it wasn't so much that he put an end to it as he just didn't just, finish yeah. it. Hmm. Oh, but do, do you know your way around this place? Um, yeah. Yeah, actually. Um, yeah. Uh, so what you have firsthand experience of is pretty much everything on this level um, and some of the areas in the next level down. You do know that there were some areas that he references in his notebook that you have not seen firsthand. <clears throat> Mm. Um, but you also know that there were doors he told you never to go to and you go through mm -hmm. and you were a very good boy. So of course you did. Yeah. Even when yeah. you were looking for, for him, he said, never, ever don't go in there. Yeah. But now you, you suspect that some of the places he references, uh, such as the, uh, the, the, uh, planar decontamination lab, the, uh, Denutherian bookshelf and uh, the rift, as well as uh, you, you are aware of there being uh, the, the big piece that uh, you know exists in this whole facility is that the control panels that talked about le power levels above to power the telescope hmm. and theoretically to power the, its weapon functions, if that were to ever be used, are powered by a planar rift turned geothermal type reactor, which is in the levels below you. Well, all the panels that we saw, they said um, like the, the power, there wasn't power to them or it needed power rerouting or something. Mm -hmm. that, do, would you know how to fix that? Um, yeah, Maybe I think at least those are on our lights. <laughs> I think we can figure it out for sure. Yeah. So, uh, also down below, there's a what was it? A Yeti, a baby Yeti, something like that. Some well, kind of snow creature, and parent up, and child. Yeah. And uh, mm. up above outside is a rock that happens to be uh, infested with a nightmare. Oh, that's nasty. Yeah, and I was thinking we, if we could get it close enough, I might be able to use the, uh, the pipe on it. It might not hmm. be so uh, aggressive toward us if we can get rid of the nightmare. Well, yeah, but then we have to fight the nightmare. Yeah, but the rock would be fighting the nightmare too. And sure, sure, sure. But there's so many things to discover and learn about this place. All of that is unimportant. 
<laughs> except for the fact that they could kill us while we're learning things. So maybe I think we we're clean the place here. out and then spend some time learning about it. Well, one of the things the Yeti is going to kill us. I mean, we left the Yeti alone. I don't think she's going to come and get us. Um, no, but we can't get past her. And if we need to get past her, sorry, I just got attacked by a cat. Um, <laughs> you have a cat? That's a bigger problem. Are you sure that's not Buster? <laughs> It's Buster. <laughs> yeah, Buster. Check my yeah, pocket to Check see if Buster <laughs> chewed his way out. <laughs> He's holding the wall of it. <laughs> of the um, tower hit. <laughs> I don't think that they'd necessarily hurt us if we could explain properly to them. Um, they were angry while well, the big one was angry about us busting in on them. And with the young one there, I suspect it's probably something to do with that. I don't really know how that stuff works. But I need to know sequential do you know why you went asleep like you did and whether it's likely to happen again because if that's I, the case I we're going to need to make sure we can get back here yeah I really don't chair. think it would happen again it was almost like it was almost like it was I don't know I'd say like an easter egg or something you know I stumbled across something and it it it, it unlocked you know? So, yeah, I think you know now that it was triggered by you breaking the cipher, um, mm -hmm. which would have taken some time and represents the like, you're I'm blocking this information unless you just can't let it go, that sort of thing. So like, right. uh, but uh, I think you believe his assumption was that if that happened, it would have happened here in this facility. And then in diagnostic mode, you would have just walked yourself to the terminal. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't really account for you being somewhere else when that happened. But I, I do think it's, it's a one time thing. If I come across another cipher of his that I can't decode, then maybe. <laughs> well, that's good because it means we won't have to try to take this chair with us. But this place is where you were built. Yeah. And you understand it now. So you could change yourself if you wanted to. Couldn't you? Mm. I don't know if that, I mean, I understand what was like... done. I don't know the spell or, uh, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's in these notes now. <laughs> so so the, but... the thing about like some of these, I, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's like some of the bits in the other room were like, coming to life by themselves but like in a really bad way so now you're being cautious what do you mean now this whole place is like crawling with really bad icky magic things i don't mm. <laughs> yeah but I don't remember know that if it's time. a good no, idea to go like sticking them some... on yourself but remember so... that time that you went you know up to the top all by yourself oh hey remember that time that you disappeared for like two days Oh, I didn't have any control over that, unlike you, who just made that decision. It's not like I went far. <laughs> you could have been killed. For like five minutes. I thought you fell off. Yeah, we thought you were dead. Could have just asked. How? You anyway. we weren't there. <laughs> so it's been a trip. Um, there's also... Uh, the airships have been kind of hanging around us and i think they're somewhere around the top of the mountain not super close but mm. that might be a problem so i personally vote to high prioritize information in case we have to leave soon does the chair that does the chair that you were in is that something that we could take with us if we wanted to uh, uh, it's, I don't think so. it's kind of built into a big machine in the wall. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't know if we could maybe shrink it down and put it in the tower in case something like that did happen again. And that's yeah, pretty to... specialized to this place and this power and mm -hmm. yeah. Not so much furniture as a as a part of the wall, I think. Mm -hmm. So there's one other thing that's slightly concerning. I'm not sure if it's good news or bad news or what kind of news, but the, I mean, the, this place was built by Rupino, right? The same guy that made the tower. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, and well, so 
Oh, never mind. Sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, and you're, you're uh, that yeah. one of the other people from the story um, was stuck or something, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but then they said they had to like leave because Trandonil was coming or something, right? Is that what you, that's what was in your memory? Yes. Right. Well, there's two possibilities to that. Like one, we we know that he's very um in, infected by nightmares so maybe he was like hunting them down because he's evil or whatever or he found out that they had made a weapon and he was gonna stop them from you know destroying half of the material plane so <laughs> maybe he was good i don't think he was good i don't know that i could <laughs> I, I, if, if I found out that somebody was creating a weapon that was going to destroy half of everything, I, I think I would probably try to stop them too. Yeah, I mean, good, bad. It's more of a matter that they both knew more than we do. And then there's that other person, Ostok. Where did they go? I mean, we can account for Trendanel and Rupino, but where did the other one go? <clears throat> It's a total mystery. I'm going to go ponder it for a moment. <laughs> so uh, remember you had all that gear too that you found the in the treasure chest. Oh yeah, yeah, the rechargeable gear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to cut you off, Paul. No. Oh, uh, also, there are like <laughs> prototype pieces of you that seem to have woken up and uh, attacked anyone that walks in the room. Were those kind of things here the last time you were here? Were they? I'm, I mean, the pieces were, but they didn't right. do anything on their yeah. own. They were inanimate. Yeah. So well, that's, yeah, that's, that they were like, Attack yeah, dogs should have like been just... non-functional. Right, mm. yeah. that's They were that's... definitely functional. Well, here's the thing. The rock up above, we're pretty sure, was corrupted. And it didn't probably get corrupted on its own, which means there's probably a source of corruption somewhere here. And that might also account for the random bits and pieces getting together. The corruption <laughs> sort of uh, pulling them together like a sort of uh, extra-dimensional glue. Uh, mm -hmm. an, an angry extra dimensional glue. What 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 is this rift thing that that powers this place? Um, That's a good question. Yeah. So rift what you know about what? it is that the there is a cavern beneath all of the tunnels in the mountain here, uh, a big open cavern where a dimensional rift has been created, and uh, it it's focused like the it's a little bit different than dimensional rifts that you're mostly more familiar with because it has a lot of machinery designed to uh to refine and adjust what can and cannot come through the rift and so there is when it's it, it, it's open to the elemental plane of fire but designed to harness all of that energy from that plane in a very specific way and to get the energy from it in a very efficient and uh, refined way. Um, but uh, that is what provides the power to the rest of the facility. We should really go see all these places for ourselves. Let's start with the library. <laughs> we can drop you off at the library. I'm okay well, with my this. concern would be you've been away from here for kind of a long time and I don't maybe nobody's kept up with this equipment so maybe it's not working properly mm. yeah well it yeah. doesn't have the right amount of power but that might also have been deliberate definitely uh definitely need to do a once over on all the systems for sure there was Let's that go. leaky pipe out that way we can show you that first I collected goop so I could show you. Ah. There's a whole puddle of it. 
Yeah. Um, so if, yeah, if they show you the vial, you recognize that that is the material that goes through what is called the, the sludge or slurry pipes. Um, and you know that one of the things that, uh, that Greg Holm did before he left is he, he dismantled and even just broke a lot of the, uh, pipes related to that. And you weren't really mm. ever sure why, but, uh, he told you it needed to be dismantled. Maybe mm. that explains why I couldn't get that valve to close. It's very rusty. I tried, yeah. But it's leaking wow. everywhere. You know this that place... there's there's actually a lot more of those pipes on the next level down. If... Do, you, do you remember how long it's been since you were last here, since you left here? Yeah, um, that I would know. Um, I think we had established... Trying to remember, yeah. Since you left, I think we had established it had been like maybe four or five months, something like that. Am, am I misremembering? Yeah. I believe that was the, the case. Yeah, I think that's probably right. Do you know how long you stayed there before, after Greg Holm left? I had really lost track of time. Um, so I'm not 100% sure. I know it was at least a year. But I don't know beyond that. It could have so, been could have been like a hundred years i don't think it was a hundred years because i think all these other people would have been around then mm. so are we gonna try to fix the power then yeah the, the, the next level has a lot of pipes i don't i don't know if he messed with those or not mm -hmm. well, i guess we should go find out but there's these things that, that like pop up from under the ground and they're really gross so you have to be careful grab there another like, handful of stones off the ground it's like i'm ready <laughs> well there's no stones on the ground in here there uh, okay. they have floors well, when, in here but we well, i'll go <laughs> actually bring us to the map um one of the th so i've got it set here so that the stuff that your characters don't have line of sight on is is more obscured than it was before <clears throat> but just uh to make it be clear because it would be to you in the room there's mm -hmm. a door right here which sequential could tell you does go down to the next level. It's access to the next level. There is also the door here that you believe just goes back up to that hallway, but there was one other door in that hallway that you didn't, um, didn't look in. I have a theory. Oh my God, that's so weird. Mm -hmm. The rocks seem quite corrupted and these little things are probably corrupted. But mm -hmm. interestingly enough, the big snowball downstairs didn't. Hmm. I wonder if it's a range thing or if they're somehow naturally resistant to it or if they just don't show it or, or, or they can live with it without even ever being affected by it. I really want to talk to them more. Well, um, maybe, maybe we'll do that. Do we want to finish this? Talk to a snowball? <laughs> Uh, yeti. Sequential, you know that Greg Holm told you that there were Yetis living in a cave further down the mm. mountain that you should just leave them alone and you know, they wouldn't bother you. Ah. Gotcha. Yeah, they shouldn't be a problem. No, they weren't like... bothered. They were bothered. We did just kind of barge in there without well, bothered by us. ourselves. But they weren't all. You, you, you should Ugh. always knock first. It's just good manners. <laughs> well, that's, you know, what you usually do, but then you were gone. Because I was going to knock on the door. At least they didn't anyway, seem corrupted. Is, right? Speaking of doors, is yeah. there, there was another door or two that we didn't yeah. check. So there was we, this... we have to be careful. So I got my shield and my sword up. It's like, sure. there's well, things. So, so there is this door uh, to the north here that just opens back into that hallway that you had initially come through before you went into the room where you fought the little things. And then there is another door on the left-hand wall of that, um, of let's, that uh, room. Let's head back over there and just clear just this level and, before we yeah. go. Yeah. So I've, I've gone ahead and I've, I've removed, I've opened the door. So if you, your you move your tokens to where you would have line of sight, you should be able to see in there now. 
And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, sequential would know a bunch of this. So like, you can, you can just tell me, uh, at, you know, mm -hmm. when, when you have a question about something he would know, you can, you can say so. Um, so what you see, Lynn, when you look in that room is, is more pipes and some more, um, uh, some kind of sophisticated control valves, but in particular, most of the room is full of steam because, uh, one of the pipes uh, has an obvious leak that's just spraying steam into the room. So it's walking into a steam bath when you enter the room. <laughs> oh, ooh. You should have a patch for that. There's like this, uh, metal clamp thing. Mm -hmm. I should have some clamps, right? Um, well, and then uh, actually, as you uh, as you are looking into that, all of a sudden, a strange little figure seems to sort of solidify out of the steam, and yet it seems to be made out of steam itself. And uh, hmm. uh, oh, no. it it suddenly sort of coalesces out of the steam and goes. <laughs> That is not very nice. Scaring people. <laughs> Quenchel, do you know this this guy? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> no. No, that's never happened before. Hey guy. Hmm. Yeah. Did we scare you? Uh he is not attacking. But he is, his body language does absolutely seem to indicate he wants you to leave the room. He's like waving his hands to try to shoo you away. Okay. Huh. See you later. No. Yeah, that's new. <laughs> Maybe he needs that steam in there. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyone who would like to, uh, who has uh, training in it, can make an Arcana check. Eight. Yeah, an eight is not going to give you very much information here. <laughs> How about a, a 19? A 19. Uh, you suspect that this is a type of elemental spirit. Um, that mm -hmm. is, it, you know, if this whole location is kind of just suffused with a lot of uh, energy that's usually channeled in specific ways and is currently disrupted. Uh, you think that that why is why a small little elemental spirit may have um, formed in the presence of this this leak in the room. Hmm. It doesn't seem like it wants to fight us. I mean, we all know how spirits can be. I think it's just trying to live. It's life. Yeah. yeah. But it can't be good to have pipes leaking like that. Hmm. How many more things have moved in? I don't know. Does anyone want to cast Comprehend Languages? I uh, had. It's okay. probably worn. Well, it lasts an hour, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, it does. So would that have been up still? When when would you have used it? Well, that, it? That's, that's my question, because I had used it... Um, because I wanted to read the little labels on the valves. <laughs> oh yeah, um, yeah. I, I guess it. it would, yeah, I think I don't think it had been a full hour. So um, I what I'll say though is that what you what you, the translated version of the little jabbering that I was making was basically saying, "No, go away. This is my room. You can't have it. Go away." So <laughs> I think it's kind of laid claim to this place. Mm -hmm. Uh, sequential, you do know that that room has the, the controls that are specifically about regulating the, uh, steam pressure and power that goes up to mm. the telescope. Well, technically, I think this place belongs to sequential. <clears throat> uh, well, huh. We were squatting, so. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Water's rights, man. <laughs> Guess until Greyholm comes back. Well, I mean, we sort of have Rupino, and he made this place, right? 
<laughs> that's what I said. <laughs> that's right. Huh? I'm not yeah. sure if that's how possession works. If you own the person that owns the place. <laughs> then you own the place. <clears throat> It's transitive properties, right? You can't yeah. own oh, is a person. Ours? And what's ours is right, also ours. true. Technically, well, it's yeah. not that you have Rupino. What you have is you have him prisoner. <laughs> right. You oh, have the cap capability of releasing job. him from a magical prison, <laughs> and you have chosen not to. So, Certain yes, right. that means all of his upon. possessions belong to you, right? Transitive properties. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, as long as we don't need anything in there, I suppose we can leave him be for now. Well, but if we want to use the telescope, we have to fix what's in there, right? Oh, do we? You think so, probably. Yeah. Or, or at the very yeah. least, um, the controls uh, that you you will need to access the controls in there. And it's not clear without more examination how much the steam leak is a problem. Well, maybe we can find another place for this spirit somewhere else. But we'll have to go looking around, I think. We came from maybe somewhere. Nice can probably yeah. go somewhere. Bathroom I mean, I with... could probably shut the steam off at a, you know, at another end and then patch oh, things you up. I mean, like and... uh, yeah. this room over here. And I'm going to walk back to this room where they were on the wrong screen, where there's all these valves. Yeah. Um, if you uh, if you make an intelligence check looking into the room with the spirit um, uh, sequential, uh, you can uh, you, you need to try to see if you can figure out where the leak is coming from in order to know, mm. like, how much of an issue would that be? Mm hmm. Nineteen. Yeah. Um, you think that that it. Basically, all it is, uh, is that that leak is from a pipe that probably doesn't matter for the telescope. However, it's just a matter of how much it will tolerate you going into the room at all and it being just generally unpleasant to be in there. Mm -hmm. So you the, the leak could keep going without directly impacting the telescope operation, except for you would just have to be exposed to it while you work the controls. Which, to be clear, means being exposed to a jet of steam, which is, you know. <laughs> Not great. Um, can I try, like, turning one of these valves, the one that says steam? Because there, there were, like, four different ones or something. I think I, mean, I, I tried to close the one that, or I tried to turn the one that said slurry before. All right. Uh, so, yeah, you, uh, you close one of the valves on one of the steam pipes. There's a little um, gauge just uh, upstream of the valve that just the little starts going. It's increasing. Mm. Uh, sequential. <laughs> Was this a good idea? <laughs> Is it supposed to do that? <laughs> Did I do that? Uh, yes, uh, not ideal. <laughs> Maybe we should turn that the other way. <laughs> yeah, the, the needle on that gauge is approaching a little area that's marked in red. Mm. Yeah, definitely turn it the other way. <laughs> that would be that would be that would be bad. <laughs> do you do you yeah, turn it back? Way. Oh yeah. yeah. Turn okay. it the other way so <laughs> sure. that I was I was trying to see if it was gonna affect the steam in the other room. Oh no, no, I, <laughs> I, I get you. I, I know red I, is bad. Red is bad. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I guess what I would I, I I think that your impression is probably you should know which specific valves you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish before <laughs> you just start manipulating stuff. Um, it, but, you know, it was worth a shot. And the answer was, no, what that valve does is make the gauge go up. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about like my uh, the limit of my mechanical awareness. So, OK. <laughs> yeah. So uh, the room where Lynn and Sequential and Zinhorn are in now, is that's where the, the chest was that had those various little gizmos in it that you, you sort of briefly examined but haven't taken any significant time with yet. Why don't we take a look at those and see if there's anything interesting in there? Yeah. 
Uh, also, sequential, if you uh, peek in the other room where they mentioned that that, that green liquid was spilling out, it, mm -hmm. it was not doing that when you left. Okay. It, de it definitely seems like, yeah, it's not, not yeah. supposed to do that. I, I tried to turn the slurry valve, but it didn't go. I just, it was too rusted. Mm. But, you know, judging by the effect of the other one, maybe that's not a good... It's Probably for the best, maybe that it didn't work. Uh, but it so, doesn't doesn't seem like it'd be a great idea for like sludge to just be hanging out in the just hall. pour out everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> we would probably want to turn that one off. Well, yeah. mm. But uh, like uh, like I said before, you know that uh, most of the actual operational stuff for that system is lower down. Right. Well, lead the way. So we're not going to look at the chest? We already did. Oh. Well, okay, but what I'm telling you I is... I was going through all that stuff. But... Well, uh, okay, but what he did, all he did is look at it and get a general impression of the kind of thing it might do. Nobody has actually studied mm -hmm. it in more detail or attuned to anything. And part of it was, I think you were waiting on sequential, who can tell you more or less what it does by touching it. And so that's I mm. I mentioned it because nobody had said anything about it, and otherwise sure. you were leaving all the new magic items I was trying to give you in the chest. <laughs> <laughs> Tis a silly place. We shall move on. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, I think we should look at the stuff. Sure. Thank so um, I'm going to give here? you some names of things, and these are things that I have created as magic items in D and D Beyond, so you can look any of these up. Um, cool. but there is a beast lure cipher, uh, and this, uh, everything that says cipher is a one, one use thing with the caveat that you now know that these little spheres of energy you think could recharge them. Um, so the beast lure cipher is rather unusual. What it does is it summons a wild beast from somewhere in the area to you. And when it arrives, it is friendly and you can ask it a question and it will answer you and then leave. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, there is an automaton seed cipher, uh, similar to ones that you have found previously, but not used. Um, there is a retriever cipher that is um, basically you can attach this little module to something and then uh, later uh, you can leave it where it was and then later you can press a button on the handle and it will bring the thing that you attach the module to to you teleport it to you sweet yeah um, there is a teleporter of traveling cipher which is more or less like a perfect instant teleport, but only for one person. And it has to be to a place that you have been before. Um, there is an imager relic, which just to, uh, for the economy of just explaining it to you, the players, is basically a Polaroid camera. Um, but uh, it uh, it's, it doesn't work very well if it's not in direct sunlight when you take the picture. Like the, the picture won't turn out very well in low light. I'll never be able to use that. <laughs> um, and there is also a perception extender relic, which I am actually at the moment forgetting what I, that one does. Um, I believe it's, uh, oh, I believe what that is, is it's a little bit like the commune spell where you can say, you can like ask it a question about the local, like the local region that you're in, like a couple mile radius. And it doesn't show it to you like you can really see it, but it gives you like a text readout of the answer. Um, you uh, sequential also see that uh, uh, there is a little bit of a, you get a weird little note that uh, there's a warning that says, um, uh, you know, do not, uh, you know, uh, uh, avoid using, avoid exposed skin when using this item. Mm. Reception so, one? 
Yeah. So yeah, that was uh yes, perception extender cool. relic. Perception, cool. Yep. All right. So that's what you guys got. Cool. Things may come in handy. So sequential, did Greg home make these or did he find them? Uh, you suspect that uh, it, it, it could almost go either way. There were a lot of these sorts of things that were left behind. But now that you understand his work a little bit better, you know that he was experimenting with some of these ciphers as well. But generally speaking, um, he was not using the Denetherian magic very much because he was concerned that it was strange. Mm -hmm. Not for the first time. I kind of wish, Sor wish Soroshana was with us. I think she'd love yeah. this place. Oh, yeah. So is there any other room on this Most. floor or have we have no. to go downstairs? Yeah, there, there's nothing else on this level. The 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 door was um, down here that accesses the low, the next level down. Mm hmm. Yeah, we should head down there. <clears throat> the other controls and pipes. All right. So it, everyone heading down there, I assume. Mm hmm. All right. Well, I will go ahead and switch us to the next map layer then. And then, uh, you know, briefly, uh, you won't be able to see it, but because uh, I need to put your tokens on it in the right spots. But uh, <clears throat> um, what what is your marching order as you descend down to the next level? Oh, um, yeah, I would think Sequential was leading the I way. I can lead I'll, the way. I'll, yeah, I'll be right behind him and like armed with a handful of pebbles, <laughs> tossing them. <laughs> okay. I'm last. Okay. I'm right up there trying to get beyond uh, Lynn because I want to see. <laughs> I'll be second to last so that Nedry doesn't have to look over me okay. or around me. Uh, all right. And then uh, we've got Evan is there. And then uh, Celine. So you should all be able to see and move your token. Mm -hmm. Let me know otherwise. But yeah, so you now have this narrow hallway that is, you know, uh, you went down a, a flight of stairs to get to this um, hallway. Yeah, I'm realizing that the the map grid is actually offset a little bit of where the actual hallway is, which is, I don't, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, you can um, you can uh, squeeze through there, but yeah, so this is a, a tunnel that it's a little halfway between the natural, more natural cavern caverns or the carved out ones and the fully like furnished and finished areas, uh, because you've, you can mostly see that, uh, um, you know, it's, there's like metal plates laid out to make sort of a floor here and there, and there are continual flame torches on the walls. And so there is a door there at the end of that hallway. So I'll go ahead and open it because. Mm. Uh, There's a door. Let's turn back. <laughs> um, Too hard. And, and then there is a uh, another door on the left as you look up that hallway. And you know that that is um, uh, a, a little area where the mountain spring that bubbles up through the mountain you, uh, those of you who are conscious on the outside saw that, that one water pool that was on the outside, um, and, and it drains in through this area. And so part of it, you can, you can get spring water from there. Um, in fact, actually, I don't know if any of you go in there to look more carefully, but, uh, sequential, you know, that like, you know, that's what the water in there is. Mm -hmm. Fresh spring water.
Um, I think any of you who do glance in there see that the water is pooling in there, but it's clearly draining in from somewhere above, almost like a waterfall, um, and then presumably draining out below, but at a pace that you know allows it to pool in there for a little bit. All right. And so sequential, I think um, as you enter this area, you know that like on the, the far side, uh, on the lower level of this room is where a lot of the machinery for that sludge stuff was, um, which you know from the notes was compressed into um, like, uh, like there was machinery to like compress it, but mostly Greg Holm didn't use it. But as you are coming into the room here, uh, you are seeing that although a lot of the pipes and so on had been dismantled the last time you saw it, there now seems to be a lot, of, a lot more of that green solution that's leaking out um, around it like that room upstairs um, that wasn't, it wasn't like that before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this 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 is a mess. Mm -hmm. What's the green this sludge supposed to do? Well, um, I think Greg Holm theorized that the machinery, when it was fully in operational, was used to uh, compress this material into like like almost like a gemstone. Uh, and then that was used for magical purposes. And in fact, there are a number of them in the telescope's construction. Mm. I think that, uh, make an intelligence check for me, uh, Sequential. Sort of like a primitive arcana stone? Works 20. A 20? Oh, there you go. I was even going to give you Arcana. Um, it occurs to you, think, a couple of things click together for you that didn't for Greg Holm. It's obvious to you now that you look at it and all the different pieces coming together, it was clearly manufacture of midnight stones. Oh. When wow, it was I functional. It. This is amazing. They, they actually to be made here. them here. Does that mean it's like liquefied nightmares? No, no, no. Midnight stones aren't nightmares. They're they're power battery for lack of, lack of a better word they power things but isn't they can be used that, to make magical items isn't that what came out of the like pipe thing after it was hit with the smoke didn't they turn into the little right exactly yeah but it's um hmm. but they aren't quite so, the same um what you do know like what greg holm didn't really ever understand the process of this exactly because it wasn't in operation right he and he didn't ever fix it but his understanding was that when the geothermal plant based on, you know, the drive based on the rift was working at optimum efficiency, not only did it get all of the energy through the rift in the form that the machinery wanted it, but it was also able to siphon off something that became this green sludge when it entered the prime material plane. And he didn't know how or why, just that that's where it came from. And Nedra's just kind of staring out at it, imagining the possibilities of a midnight stone factory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because um, if it is liquefied nightmares, that would explain a lot about the nightmare rock that's outside. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Well, it's also occurring to you now, looking at it, that it is clearly like busted up and leaking badly. And uh, as I said, sequential, um, a lot of the piping was disassembled last time you were here, but mm -hmm. it was not leaking like this. Yeah. <clears throat> if you could repair this factory and make more midnight stones, uh, there's a whole incredible amount of magic that can be made from that. Not True. nightmares. That, that's, that's a corruption of them. Right. I think we should. Hmm. But what about the price you have to pay for it? 
Well, this can't be related to that. It might. You have a very optimistic yeah. view of things. <laughs> it may all be related, but well, um, midnight stones are to... aren't all like that. And how do you know? Well, we already saw a couple. The the one that um uh, that was in the garbage pit that was powering that it malfunctioned because it was messed with, but it was stable. It wasn't corrupted. Well, if, if it is made from nightmares, then at its very essence, it is. It's just controlled nightmares, right? But there are plenty of midnight stones out there and they all there don't are come from here. There are also plenty of nightmares. <laughs> they don't all come from here. That's like saying finding water that's not drinkable means all water is not drinkable. Yeah, that was more like a tool where it can be be corrupted or be used exactly. in bad ways. Also, doesn't isn't like the simplest explanation tends to be the most correct one? Simplest explanation is only useful for simple people. <laughs> okay. um, so, uh, uh, everyone, make a perception check for me, please. <laughs> now <laughs> five. <laughs> oh, it's not, it's not uh, there we go natural yeah, 20 natural 20 for oh. Zaylene. um i think Zaylene, it makes sense actually that this would be you to notice this because as sensitive as you are to you know change you know darkness and light and all of those sorts of things you realize that not only is there a sort of a greenish glow coming from the north end of that little cave down there but that the glow is not static. Um, it it just you just saw the shadows like rotate a little bit as though some source of light moved in there. You guys, and I put my shield up and I got my sword. What? What is yes. <laughs> something in that cave? I saw it move. Of course there is. I chuck a pebble off that way yeah. <laughs> let's see yeah. so you yeah. you just what to toss it over like over here yeah all right like right can... <laughs> sure i don't know sure. if i can get it just a pebble yeah so. so you definitely especially now that you're all looking you definitely notice the light shift just before a strange little floating serpentine green creature that is glowing with this light uh, emerges around the corner looking at where your pebble um, landed and then uh, once it arrives there it looks up at all of you with these sort of big sort of uh, like almost black doll's eyes eyes and it, it's it's honestly kind of a cute little thing if not still pretty weird it's horrifyingly cute, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's nope on that one. <laughs> it's it's almost like like combine an eel and a jellyfish, but it's floating like that in the air and glowing bright green and blinking big black eyes at you. We kind of want to keep him, you guys. Mm, that's going to be a nope for me. I'm going to try to speak at it in my mind. Okay. Hello. Uh, so this is the telepathic. Yep. Um. What you just say hello. Yep. Um. You don't get an answer, but it does move closer. It kind of cocks its head a little curiously. Who are you? Again, telepathic. It once again, it doesn't answer but uh, you're getting sort of curiosity vibes. It seems curious. Oh. I don't know if it can actually speak or understand <laughs> language though. Maybe it's curious about whether or not you're a snack. <laughs> a second one <laughs> peeks its head around the corner. Curious is better than angry. Well, there's twins. So much nope right now, the nope just doubled. <laughs> I mean, it could just be like the Yeti. Things are moving in when space is empty. Master always says you got to make sure to sweep all the corners. I don't think that's exactly what he meant. I think they spent a little too much time around this magical goo. <laughs> Maybe. 
it may be a magical transformation. They could be imbued with incredible amounts of power. Mm -hmm. That's kind of neat, I'll actually. stay back here, thanks. I wonder how much of this could be transferred or bottled. Probably not. Uh, I don't know how really useful it is in this form. Hey, uh, Nedry, uh, it, it spits at you. Please make an uh, intelligence saving throw for me. <laughs> uh, is it uh, magical? Uh, yes. <laughs> but it's not like charming or anything. It's No, I, just if it's a, a magic saving throw, I get to advantage. Uh, yeah. so. See if that actually rolled. Uh, I don't know if it did. I'm. Not... Uh, I see just a d20 roll. No, that was because I was trying to. Okay, oh. I'll do it manually. Um, I'm using a different browser and it's messing everything. Up. All right, so that's one, and that's two. So twelve is the best. That's terrible. Uh, okay. Well, it is. It is actually still good enough. Um, that you avoid the secondary effects, but you do. Um. Uh, roll, roll a D six for me. <laughs> a two, that seems to be my favorite roll tonight. Okay. Um, okay. So that is going to be, uh, as the spit hits you, <laughs> you're going to take 24 fire damage. Oof. As the spit, upon hitting you, this little glob just suddenly like like flares up, like there's some extreme chemical reaction happening, and it's just burning like you know like uh, thermite um, on you. Oh! Um, and you get the feeling that there's more oh. magic to it than just that too. So uh, we're going to go ahead and roll initiative. <laughs> I told you it was nope. <laughs> Why have I offended thee? Um, all right, let's see. These things get, uh, okay. 17 for the dritches. Uh, let me know if anyone needs me to like add them to the tracker. Uh, does someone want to run, Evan? <clears throat> I mean, I will if nobody volunteers, but you guys could take some <laughs> weight off of my hands. Um, I can do it. Okay. okay. I've got a sheet up here, so. Great. So initially, uh, it doesn't look like it added me to the tracker. Um, okay. Well, I can. Uh... If you can uh, give me control over Evan's token. So oh, can... sure. Yep. I thought I had it so that everybody did, but, um, oh, I guess not. Well, now everyone can. Uh, New map, who this? Yeah. Oh, wow, now I can see more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, because you can see what Evan can see now. That yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's fair. Like, I, I think that's reasonable because, you know. It... He's been really secretive. He hasn't told us a damn thing. He's like, I've seen these things, and I'm ignoring them. Okay, so. um so Nedry, you are actually up first. Okay. Hmm. That was very mean. Um uh it's so like it 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 did that spit on you and now it's still just kind of looking up at you with that sort of curious like animal like expression like hmm. <laughs> uh, um yeah. I think Nedry's going to uh, put his hands over his head, scream, and run back. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all he can do. Uh, and uh, he'll take the defensive action, the dodge action. Okay. Um, or I don't know, is he still on fire? <laughs> uh, no, you took, you took that damage, but then it burned okay. out. Like, so, yeah, you're okay. not... Not Actually, he's probably burning. making sure the books are okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's his first <laughs> impulse. In, in uh, all right. So, did did you take any other action, or you just just dodge? Okay, great. Okay, so next up then is Zinhorn. 
I am going to cast Sacred Flame. Okay. They adjust my windows here so I can. uh... A dex save with Mm -hmm. a at fourteen. They got a fifteen. Sorry. Uh, Any any other actions moving at all or? Uh, Let me take a look here. yeah, well, I would move if I were set up to move. Um, so can I go up and around like this? Uh, yes. Yeah. So basically, you can see that like everything up to this little this little outline where you know where it's not green and then it is green, so to speak, is about yeah. a ten foot drop at that ridge. Okay, so and I then, can yeah, and then the little white line is like a railing. Okay. So I'll just stay on this side of the railing for right now. Okay. Uh, it is now the Dritch's turn. Uh, let's see. First one. Uh, does it recharge its spit? No. So it is going to... Um, uh, you, you watch as it seems to be moving in your direction, Zinhorn. And even though it's floating, it does seem to be floating a more or less set like height off the ground. Um, but then as it reaches this, this wall, it seemed like you lose sight of it below the, the ridge. But then you watch as it just has tunneled up through the stone to get to you moving as fast as if there was nothing there and leaving just like a complete like circular tunnel behind um where it has just tunneled through there um and it's going to uh try to bite you gets a uh, a 22 to hit that'll hit mhm 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 so that's going to wow i know i picked this creature but keeps being surprised by some of the things it does uh it's going to do 17 (laughs) piercing damage um as as you kind of realize that like something about the way it bites kind of similar to the way it just sort of burrowed right through the stone as though there was nothing there it seems like it can like it's biting you deeper than it seems like it should be able to given just the actual physical specifications of its mouth Okay, and Chomp. you said it was 15, 1, 5? 17. 17, thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then... Uh, doop, 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 doop. Ouch. Doop. Um, sequential, um, please make an intelligence saving throw for me. <clears throat> Indeed. Oh, wait, that's not a saving throw. Uh, but so it's 13 plus seven. So 20. Okay. Uh, so you are also able to avoid the secondary effects of this, but you do take uh, roll a D six for me. Mm-hmm. Six. Okay. You take uh, as, as the, the, uh, as the globule globule of spit hits you, it seems to go off like a flashbang, like, and you take 14 thunder damage. Whoa. And then a third one comes around. Um, and then I think this one is going to spit at Zinhorn. So go ahead and uh, make, a, uh, make the intelligence saving throw and roll a d6 for me, please. Uh... Intelligence saving throw. A seven. Okay, uh, that's going to fail. So um, first you're going to take, go ahead and roll the d6. Uh, That would be a six. Okay, so you're also taking thunder damage. You're going to take 26 thunder damage. Mm. Uh, You are also stunned. And give me a moment to find the table i need here i am down to 12 hit points Mm. oh damn it all right hang on 
And I am stunned. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I I, th I thought I had <clears throat> this table ready, but it's. Uh... It, so I have a new thing that I haven't done before, but it's. Uh, I don't know when I would use it. It's a reaction, so it's to help somebody with their saving throw. Okay. I don't know if it's uh applicable here, but it's a flash of genius. Oh. Um, yeah, you, you, it can be applicable here because essentially, like, it doesn't put a lot of mechanical limitations on it. It's just really kind of implied as to be, like, at the last second, you're able to tell right. them, like, wait, no, to the left. Right. You know, or whatever, <laughs> you know, like, in this case, it's an intelligence saving throw. Um, but I think you, you can just say, like, no, focus on, um, right. focus on butterflies. That's that's that how I did it. <laughs> um, but but it, it gives plus it five to plus your result, four. right? Is it yeah. plus four? Okay. So it says plus four on my character sheet. Okay. So Papa um, would have done. So uh, plus seven plus four actually does bring you to a success for for this particular saving throw. So uh, you are not stunned, uh, Zinhorn, um, okay. and you do not uh, suffer uh, the, this other effect. You did still take the twenty six damage. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, that is the Dritch's turn. Uh, Lynn, you are up next. Oh man, that looked bad. <sighs> See, I, I know that I think everybody is my friend, but this is not one of those situations. <laughs> um, and I guess the closest one to me, I am going to cast, um, mind sliver. Okay. It's a intelligent saving throw 15. All Houston. right. On the closest one to you, okay. I can roll that. That's gonna fail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, six damage, and it will have to roll a d4 and subtract the number um, from the next, the first time it makes a saving throw before the end of my next turn. Okay. Um, it's, it's little mouth opens as though to make sort of a, like a yelp or something, but you hear no sound. And, um, then I will, <clears throat> cause I can't cast another spell. A um, purple dot to remember that that's when that one's affected. Yeah. And I'll look at Zinhorn and, uh, go, uh, spirits tremble, empires falter. Hearing the ballad of storm and stone. And you have a 1d6, oh, 1d8, excuse me. <laughs> right. The little yellow uh, dot is for your bardic inspiration. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. And it can also be added to, I believe, an attack or healing. Uh, I mean, it's it's depending on your, your right. variation. So whatever it says. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to find the feature. Saline, you're on deck. You're you're mm -hmm. you're up here. Yep. Yeah. So inspiration. I am going to use a bonus action to cast Hexblade Cur Hexblade's Curse on the one that Lynn just hit. Okay. And then I'm going to red dot. <clears throat> Well, it going was to... supposed to be red, but it's in a little green aura, so it looks different. So anyway. I'm going to do Toll the Dead. Okay. That's so it has wisdom to make save a wisdom save. Yep. Okay. 14. 14. It gets a six. Okay. So it takes 19 necrotic damage. Uh, it does take damage, but you watch it seem to shake off some of the effect. Um, it would seem to be resistant to necrotic. Did that did that automatically add my um my plus three from Hexblade's curse or no? Um looks like no. It, okay. it, it rolled two D two D twelve, is that right? Yeah, because it is. Yeah, because it was Yeah. So um so it would be another another um three. Yeah. So D twenty one total. Yeah. Um but I I'm I'm doing another two because it would have like made it the next even number so uh right. but yeah it seems to be resistant to necrotic but it does it okay. does it's effective otherwise uh okay. okay 
Uh, anything else? Um, I'm going to move back a little bit mm -hmm. over here. Right. Yeah, right here. Okay. Uh, sequential. Yes. I'm going to um, use an action. And actually, I already did the feature once. So I <clears throat> use a spell slot to create my uh, little my little buddy, my little fire flamethrower buddy. Which we had the uh, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. the sphere icon for before. Yeah, let me uh... um, mark off the spell slot, which is the action, mm -hmm. and um, if I can, I think I would just kind of drop it over the side. I mean, you can, yeah. Boop boop, yeah. Where is and, that uh, token? So directly to my right. It's not pinging for some reason, but that's cool. Uh, um, oh, there we go. I think that's what we used before, although not that big. <laughs> okay, and then uh, you want it right there? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, and then... Uh, and it would immediately, as a bonus action, cause it to bellow a flame and have those two in front of it because uh, it's a 15-foot cone. Mm-hmm. To a, a dexterity saving throw. Okay. Uh, one of them gets a three, and the other one gets a thirteen. Uh, Dex fifteen. Okay. So both would fail and All right. take seven points of fire flamethrowery damage. Nice. They they seem to not enjoy that. Good. <laughs> <laughs> their, their, their cute little mouths go like down at the end. <clears throat> <laughs> I think I can't, I don't think I can make it move until next turn. Okay. All right. Or, oh no, as part of the same bonus action, you make it move 15 feet. So okay. I guess I would make it move right in front of their faces to, you know, be a a shield, so to speak. Okay. Maybe you pissed them off enough. No. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, and anything else for your turn? That's it. Or, okay. No, that's it. All right. Well, Evan's up Ooh. next. So these things are bad, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. And he'll move a little closer <laughs> and pull up his, it's a hand crossbow, I believe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, is it true that he can fire twice or just the no one? it's it, basically it's he can do yeah because it's loading um it, he can't but he could do for example a hand crossbow and a sword okay uh, but, the right yeah, the, least... yeah the language is unclear because i adapted it from something else but but yeah gotcha. so one hand crossbow so he will make a hand crossbow attack that's an 11 uh an 11 does not hit uh, I'm never going to get the hang of this thing. And he'll load it up, I guess, again. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, so that puts us back up to the top of the round with Nedry again. <laughs> that works out weirdly. Um, yeah, still smarting. It's like, I just wanted to talk. Uh, he will... Yeah, they're well within range. Um, he will trace a kind of shakily, because that hurt a lot, uh, the symbol of uh, the multi symbol of all elements and then focus in on acid and cast acid splash on this one and the one next to it. Okay. What, that is what, a dex uh, save. Okay. Uh, that's a 20 for dirty 20 for one of them, but only a seven for the other. Okay. The dirty 20 takes nothing. Okay. The other one takes seven acid. All right. And he will move back further. Uh, probably about there. Okay. And that's his turn. Great. Zinhorn. Uh, Zinhorn is going to stage a retreat. Can I back away from this thing? Uh, it will get an opportunity attack unless you disengage. And if I disengage, then I can't do anything else. Well, it uses your action, but you could still do a bonus action. Uh, mm, yeah, I, I gotta back up. 
Hmm. All right. So it is going to try. Um, are you, are you disengaging? Well, I'm, I'm, or, I'm disengaging. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. Yeah. So you could, if you had like spiritual weapon or something that could still work, but. Right. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going right. to do spiritual weapon. All right. Let's get your hammer. Oops. There we go. Bloop. I don't know why everything keeps coming in big on this map. Um, and All the right. spiritual weapon is going to be. Yeah, right you can you can move the, it. You can put it where you want now. I don't. See, oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. um, right there, mm -hmm. and the, I'm going to attack the one just to the right. Yep, that's the one that's the most hurt so far. Okay. That'll be a ten. Okay. Unfortunately, a ten does miss. Okay. Okay. Uh, but you've got that up. So now it is the the Dritch's turn again. They're each going to see if they recharge their spit. No, no, no. Um, yes, <laughs> uh, yes, yes. <laughs> so uh, this one that's right here by your little, uh, your little cannon um, mm -hmm. is going to attack that. Um, cool. Sequential. Uh, let me double check. I think it's armor class is 18. Okay. Uh, um, so. It only gets a 13 to hit. Yeah, it's armor class is 18. So miss. Okay. Okay. Um, great. This other one uh, that was already up here is going to come up here and. Uh, uh, attack you sequential sure. uh, but it only gets a seven as it tries to cool. bite you um yes. this one does your your little cannon doesn't get opportunity attacks does it no i okay. don't think it would because it, right. it, it, it yeah it works on my bonus action yeah. so and uh spiritual weapon doesn't get opportunity attacks either um no yeah so this one one two three four it's coming up and it starts looking initially like it might be going for sequential, but here's the thing. Um, Zaylene, you see it looking around and like almost like sniffing and then it looks at you. And it's moving towards you. Um, and, uh, it doesn't, you know what? I, I think it is going to go ahead and dash. Do, 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 do. And it like runs up to you, but that is its full action. But it, it definitely seems to sniff something on you that it sent it straight for you. All right. Um, that is all of them. Okay. Carolina, your, your turn. Well, I don't like that. So I am going to cast Dissonant Whispers on the one in front of Zaylene. Okay. It's a Wisdom 15 saving throw. All right. Uh, let's see. 14 on the die, I think, which gives it, yeah, just exactly 15. Okay. Yeah. I believe it still takes half. Okay. Which is going to be four and a half. So All four. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, it definitely sort of, uh, sort of, it like twitches as it reacts to that and kind of gives you a look. Uh, it gives you a big sort of hurt puppy dog eyes look like, but, but why? Um, and so now, uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so that is, uh, any anything else on your turn, Flynn? Oh, yeah, um, one more um, bardic inspiration. <clears throat> Again, to Zaylene, in the face of danger grave, not once did his courage cave. Mistress dark above his head, he refused to feel the dread. So you have a 1d8 bardic inspiration. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so. Uh, that pig song. <laughs> <laughs> My pig liked that song, like he started weakening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. All right, so uh, Zaylene, it is your turn now. Okay, I am going to um, Eldritch Blast mm. this dude in front of me. Seems fair, yeah. With both of them. 
Is that a ranged attack? Yeah, like I, um, I think usually it would be at disadvantage um, if you're at point blank range. Okay, well, the first one was a 20 and the second one was a 19. Okay, well, so uh, that would be the first, <laughs> the two rolls for the first blast, right. which does hit. Right. Um, yeah. Um, re roll the, 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 the damage because it's not clear. Well, you know what? I'll just give you the six. How about that? Okay. And, and it gets the plus three because that's the one that I hexed. Okay. So it's nine force damage. Mm -hmm. And then for the second one. Uh, okay. So the disadvantage roll would be a 10, which it w right. will miss. But I'm going to add my bardic inspiration to that. Okay. Um, so a 10 gets it to. Um, an 18. Ah, that will hit. So that's another six damage. And do you only add the hex, the hex, the one time, or is it any time you think it's damage? once per turn? Um, I mean, d double check the um, the language of it. I, I don't have the. It says you gain a plus three bonus to damage rolls. Oh, so well, it then, would yeah, work I guess for both would. of them. Yeah, it would. Okay, so that's nine again. Okay, so uh, yeah, that that one is looking pretty beat up. It's not down; it's still coming at you, but uh, it is uh, very, very injured. Yay! Uh, oh, oh, wait a minute. Hmm? That that nineteen Eldritch Blast because it was it's hex. It actually counts as a critical. Oh, is that one of your Hexblade yeah. things? Yeah, yeah, that's because I had, I cast Hexblade's curse on it. It says if you um, score a critical hit on a roll of nineteen or twenty. Oh, and, okay, yeah, yeah. So roll one more d ten then. Okay. Roll one d ten. That's eight. Okay, so you hit it twice with these Eldritch Blasts, and it looked like it was summoning up just the last of its strength to keep coming after you, and then the Eldritch Energy sort of crackles up its spine again once more, and then it's like... Ooh. And I get nine hit points, but I can't take them because I'm already at full hit points. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> All right, so yeah, that one is dead. Uh, okay. Sequential. E, um, so, um, so my action first, I guess the one in front of me, um, I'm going to uh, scorching ray at uh, three rays. So the first ray, oh, mm -hmm. has an uh, eleven to hit. Yeah. Um, once again, this is this is also you're making ranged attacks at point blank, so. Um, oh, it, it'll oh, be at huh. disadvantage. That's right. Yeah, I mean, you can change what you're doing if that makes a difference. Um, no, nah, I already started. So, okay. um, so uh, for the first one, one would be an eleven, which doesn't hit. Right, and then the second one, the um, first one's thirteen. So thirteen's the best. No, uh, the eleven and the thirteen were the first two. So, oh right. Yeah. So twenty three right. is good, but now you need to roll the second one for that. Yeah. <laughs> sixteen. 16. That, that will hit. Yeah, that'll hit. Yay. So that will do. Two six and um oh the D eight for the Arcane Firearm. Fifteen. Nice. All right, you have one oh, more blast, and I then think. third ray. Yeah. Being, uh, thirteen or all right, thirteen. Uh, okay, yeah, thirteen just hits. Another four. Nice. And then the flame thrower will flame throw its cone at the one to its right. Mm -hmm. Makes a dexterity uh, save. Right, right. Dexterity fifteen. Yeah, it gets a nineteen. And that one it saves and it doesn't i don't think it says it takes half i think it just misses okay well where did it go i'm sure it just misses okay well yeah let me know if that's different but we'll assume mm -hmm. that it misses for now 
Um, okay, so that was sequential. It is Evan's turn now. Oh, it does say half as much. Okay, uh, yeah. All right, cool. So go ahead and... Which is only three points. So three is the full 1. amount? 1.5. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Takes one, <laughs> one fire damage. Just the t the very tip angered. of one of its weird little tentacle <laughs> fin things. It's Keep just it a angered. teeny little blister on it, and it, and it holds it up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, Evan's turn. Okay, I think Evan watches this thing fly very quickly by him. Why well, they move really fast? Pulls out his sword, sees Zaylene de decimated. Oh wow, the mistress is pretty powerful. Uh, and then takes off running to try to help. Uh, uh, sequential. Sequential, yeah. and then we'll take some sword attacks. All right. A swong, swong of ten. Uh, That's not good. Does ten, it? ten is wow, not good. Wow, really bad rolls. Uh, and the second swung is 14. 14 hits. Yay. Six damage. All right. I'm helping. Yes. Right, you got a piece. <laughs> All right. So that puts it back up to Nedry's turn. Right. Uh, let's see. I'm going to do some check here. Awesome. Um, yeah, he's kind of warily looking at the one that's died and half wanting to inspect it and then kind of uh, okay um we'll move a little bit just to see a little bit better and then fire off a uh uh acid uh blast at okay. that one is that dex so save DC again? 17 yep uh, 19 <laughs> they're, no they're rolling great on their saving throws and bad on their attack rolls <laughs> um okay uh zinhorn you're up all righty. Um, I have the spiritual weapon up. Mm -hmm. In order to maintain that, can I still heal myself? Uh, yeah, you you myself? um, it, you just can't cast another concentration spell, but healing is not concentration. Okay, I'm going to do cure wounds at fourth level on myself. Seems probably like a good plan. Yeah, twenty eight. All right. Um, if if wow. it helps that bardic inspiration, the one d eight can also be rolled and added to the healing stuff or an attack spell. Oh, it's one d eight. Yeah, I'm gonna mm -hmm. roll that. I'm gonna add that. So that'll give me an additional five points. All right. And Good deal. then I will use my bonus action to attack with the spiritual weapon. Sounds great. They changed things, and now I can't find anything. All right, here we go. And I got a nine. Yeah, a nine's not going to do it, uh, no. unfortunately. Um, but that makes it now, once again, the Dritch's turn, and they're going to see if they get their spit back. Nope. Nope. Uh, all right. Um, sequential. Um, you're getting another one. Try to bite you. Um, it gets a 12. Miss. And the other one is trying again to bite the little arcane cannon <clears throat> thing. Um, and it gets an 18. All right. That hits it. All right. Um, so that's going to be 24 piercing damage. Does it, it destroys it? Yes, it destroys it. I don't think it actually blows up, but it destroys it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just, yeah, you see it, how? And then it just sort of falls to pieces and it looks off like, you know, just making the, but where'd my toy go face? <laughs> uh, okay, Carolina. Um, let's see. Looks like I've got, I'm going to move up here. Can it? glance at Nedry. Like, you take better care of yourself. Um, but then I see both Evan and Sequential have got one of these things over here. So I'm going to cast Dissonant Whispers. Okay. So Wisdom 15. Right. Uh, only 10. Sweet. Ooh, 13 points. And nice. um, let's see. It has to move as far as its speed allows away from me. Okay. Uh, 
I mean, it's kind of just going to make it go right into the wall. Like, I mean, <laughs> you know what? I think I'll, I will have it interpret that as fleeing back down its little tunnel. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Taking a run for it down into that little tunnel. Things are so nasty. Just because they're cute doesn't mean they're safe. <laughs> I was, uh, I didn't know that. Hmm. Uh, all right. Uh, Zaylene. Um, I'm going to move up here so that they are both within 30 feet. Is that one? Um, let's see. The, 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 the nearer one certainly is, um, hang on. Uh, yeah, it looks like the other one is just out, out of your range. The 30-foot okay, range. So if I move up here, will that put it within the range? Uh, it looks like it's still 35. And plus, it would be around a okay, corner okay. a little bit. You wouldn't have to run yeah. out of sight. OK, well, either way, I'm going to cast Bone. What? I'm going to cast Bane on oh, okay. that guy. All right. <laughs> um, so on the one you can see. What, yep. what, so he has to make a charisma saving throw. Charisma? 14. Okay. Charisma 12. Sorry. Okay. Charisma. What is their charisma? Not as high as some of the other things. Uh Oh, it only gets an 11. Okay. So now he has, um, whenever he fails, whenever he fails a saving throw, makes an attack roll or a saving throw before the spell ends, he has to roll a d4 and subtract right. that number. Great. Uh, wasn't that the one that's already got a disadvantage to saving throw or something? The purple dot that's there. Uh, I just, I just now put a purple dot on this one. Oh. The other one had the purple dot already. Gotcha. Like that's the one that she killed already. Yeah. So now he's baned. Baned. Batman. <laughs> burn. Burn. You live in the dark, but I was born there. Exactly. Mm. That's why I developed this green glow so I can see where I'm going. I really want them to have this actual muffled voice now. <laughs> yeah, these cute little creatures that talk like that. Like me. Yeah. <laughs> I why just are you wanted talking to me? say I don't hello understand. and then to suck your life essence out through your soul. Can't you just stand mm -hmm. still? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so that was Zaylene's turn. Uh, sequential, you're up. All right, last hoorah. Um, uh, well, that's a little premature. <laughs> there are two of well, them right. left, so. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, no. Um, oh, no, I, for some reason, I thought I could only see one. Hmm. Well, one of them uh, hmm. went back into the tunnel a little uh, bit. Right, Okay. Um, <laughs> this is going to be an amazing bank shot. No. So the Should one next to the spiritual just... hammer, I will go ahead and do a, do a. Should sequential have gotten a opportunity attack when that one fled? No, um, because it's forced movement. Mm, okay. I believe I have ruled yeah, yeah, otherwise yeah. Uh, in the past, mm -hmm. but that that's my current understanding of the rule. Sure. Uh, so I, I'll do a firebolt at it. Okay, so... firebolt. Pew. 20, 20 hit. certainly Soft hits. 20. Yeah. Nice. That's a nice damage roll. Sweet. Yep. It is uh it is not destroyed, but it couldn't take another one of those. All right. And that's it for me. Okay. Evan's turn again. Hey, they're running away. Um he will fire his uh, hand crossbow at this one here. Yeah. I got it. I got it. Just hold still. 17 to hit. That'll hit. Four damage. All right. Well, you know, hey, every little <laughs> hit it. helps. I hit it. He definitely Even does four full damage to it. All right. All right. Cool. Uh, so, Nedry, you're up again. Yep, uh, he will sling the spell Acid Blast at uh, this one. Okay, Dex so, again. Yep, but now a disadvantage because of the thing that... Oh, doing, uh, it's not that... disadvantage, but it does have to minus a D4. So um, okay. it, it got a 19 naturally. 
Uh, but then rolled a four, so 15? 15 is a fail. Aha! Bane! Seven points of acid damage. Ouch! I don't like that. <laughs> we shouldn't have spit at me then. The acid burns us. So does fire. I was just trying to be friendly in the means of my culture. We think that. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, anything else from from you, Nedry? It's it's very hurt, but not down. Um, he'll be a little bolder and move a little closer, but that's about mm -hmm. it. Okay, Zinhorn. Uh, the one right uh, by your spiritual hammer is very wounded. The other one less so. The other one went up the tunnel, though, right? Yeah, but not very far. Okay. Um, can I do the bonus action first with the yeah the hammer? Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to try the hammer again. Hammer. Hammer time. Mm -hmm. Hammer will get an 18 to hit. That will hit. And I will get six points of damage. Oh, not quite enough to take it out. Uh, can I get there? <laughs> yeah. It's Ooh. it's barely hovering now. It's got a, a black eye under its black eye. And uh, its nose is running and it's sniffling at you. Uh, that's as far as I can get. Hmm. That's 30, 30 feet, right? Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I guess I'll try my sling. Okay. You still attacking the, the nearer one? Yeah. Okay. Because I can't see the other one. Uh, you should be able to see it from where you are now. Natural 20. 20 nice. <laughs> it had one hit point, so you, I'll, you can narrate uh, how, how you... Uh, Zinhorn pulls out his sling, spins it up to speed, and lets go. And the the stone just goes right through it, hits the wall, bounces back, hits it again, <laughs> and it just drops. Yeah, nice. So you've taken out that one. There's only one left. It's right here. You should be able to see it from from now. I can see it. Yeah. Um. Yep. So uh, that it means it is its turn. Does not get its spit back. And it's suddenly confused. Wait, why was I going this way? Zoop. 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 Uh, I think it goes back up through its little tunnel. That's three, four, five. Yeah, it's going to try to get to you, Zeline. And bite you. Gets a 14 to hit. Yeah, that hits. Uh-huh. Well... You are going to take 25 piercing damage. Okay, and I'm going to use my reaction mm -hmm. to do Hellish Rebuke. That seems like a good plan. It's like, no, no, don't like that. It has to make a DC save 14. 14 uh, is that dex, right? Yep. It gets a nine. All right, so it takes 18 fire damage. Nice. You uh, you destroy it. You Would you like to describe this? Mm -hmm. I'm so jacked up because I killed that other one that I just explode it everywhere. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> there's like green and black that just sprays out everywhere. And it's got little bits of fire on it as it mm. falls like ashes and... Yeah. And Lynn kind of comes wandering up. She said, you know, you really should think of a catchphrase when you do cool stuff like that. <laughs> I think Evan's probably standing there just sort of like, wow. Twice. Yeah. I, the, the, <laughs> Im, I, the image I had in my head that I didn't actually say, but now I guess I am, is, you know, how in Toy Story 2, there's the bit where uh, Jesse does a fancy aerial maneuver uh, to like rescue one of the toys, and then Buzz is just standing there, and his wings suddenly pop out. <laughs> <laughs> In any case, yes, he's impressed. 
he is Next also club. a little bit concerned that you might be like, like have fire poison for blood or something because it bit you and exploded. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, he's like, wait, so what's the rules? Like if it bites you and you die, it's poisonous or venomous, <laughs> but if it bites you and it explodes, wait, what's that one? Yeah. <laughs> But yes, uh, it seems that the uh, the immediate danger has passed. You're no longer an initiative. I would want to go over to the one that was destroyed near him and just sort of nudge it with this toe, trying to figure out mm -hmm. what it is. Um, its body seems to be breaking down very quickly. Like it, it it's, and it doesn't really seem biological inside. It's almost just kind of disintegrating. Was it? No, never mind. I was going to say, does it look similar to the weird, like, raining anti-magic fish things at all? Like, as it breaks down, does it... Um, yeah, there's maybe some general similarity. I, it's not, like, anything that's an obvious connection, but, you know, there's... Yeah, it, in, it's certainly similar in the way that it seems to be dissolving into nothing. Maybe we should collect some and compare the, the samples. So sequential, you know that although right now it seems to be, the floor seems to be, you know, covered with this uh, spilled green slime that the actual control panel for the machinery is up at the end of that little north tunnel there. Um, also uh -huh. just in terms of this space, there's a big door here and a smaller door here. One of which leads directly to the upper level of the geothermal plant. The other one leads to some other access tunnels. So do we need to go turn off that valve? Uh, yeah, I think we should. How's Nedry looking? Yeah, how's Curious. Aileen looking? Um, Nedry's got his book open and is kind of writing. He's kind of annoyed at some of the curled pages on the edge that are slightly singed. As okay, his okay, but quite this, much. Yeah. How how does Nedry look though? <laughs> Nedry is very singed. <clears throat> okay, then um Nedry can If he were distracted, he would probably be a lot more um, angry about it. But oh, that was terrible. Uh oh. Nedry can take five points back. <laughs> oh, he'll kind of he'll kind of look up at the, the magic. Oh, thanks. I wonder if these things were always here or changed or whether they were summoned like that, that other one upstairs or whether they were summoned and then corrupted. Lynn, take well, they're not here back. now. Well, I'm sure there are more. Who, who did you say? Oh, I'm sorry. Jenny. <laughs> Jaylene. Any 14? Like... 14, yeah. Okay, thank I'm, you. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was at like half my life. Yeah, those things are uh, like their attack. Nasty. To, their to hit bonus is not high, but they do a lot of damage when they hit. Oh yeah. And then their spit is a weird mechanic where mm. they don't have to make an attack roll, and you only get a saving throw for the secondary effect, which none of you got to learn what that is, other than being <laughs> okay stunned. with that. <laughs> wow. So how do we shut off the goop? Is it up here? You said. Yeah, unfortunately, it's kind of the way they came from. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Yeah. Do you think there'll so be more? Are you just walking through the puddles of this stuff, or what are you doing there, Sailing? Because it's all um, over the floor. Well, I mean, we were standing right here. Was it up here too? On this? No, um, up there. It's only the sort of the greenish tint you see up there is only because the uh, the the uh, monster is glowing. You see oh, what I mean? okay. Okay. Um, so, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and say that they, they have dissolved now, the glow has gone away, and so. Okay. I would probably go down this ramp. Not rather than, like, going that way, because didn't you say it was, like, a 10-foot drop? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I would go down the <clears> ramp. Right. Um, yeah, also, for the record, um, now that those things are gone, it is no longer lit in there, so... Those of you with dark vision are probably uh, still seeing stuff up there, but if you do not have dark vision, you're not seeing anything. So the the, tor the torches, the ever lit torches, would aren't here anymore. Uh, if, if there were any, they have been dispelled or destroyed. Okay. 
sequential can you see no but i've got my glowing hammer dancing okay. lights okay Doo. yeah i can cast them too all right um uh so if you're going to use just dancing lights to <clears throat> light up the area in there i will i will just go ahead and uh add some uh what just happened uh Uh, should be able to see in there now. Sweet. Okay. So we, can we like walk around this here? I mean, that that's kind of what I'm asking is that like it's a yeah. narrow tunnel with this green slime all over the floor. So mm -hmm. I'm that's what I'm asking you is if you want to go that way, tell me, are you just walking through it or are you doing something else? Let me know. I'm like trying to walk around it, but I see like once you get up closer, it's like everywhere. Yeah. Like there, there's deeper fly. puddles, but like there's <clears throat> not really anywhere that's not at least got a little bit. Do we have to yeah. go up that way? Is that the only way? Yeah. Yeah, that is where the controls for the machinery that was the Midnight Stone manufacturer, like that's the controls for it were up there. We, we don't have any gadgets that let us hover or anything, do we? <laughs> no. no. Well, I can fly for a short period of time, but I don't know if I can get that can far. I some things to levitate. Do you have that, dark that'd vision be tomorrow. Too, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see fine. You know, definitely dip, dip a toe in the slime and see if it's, you know, it's not like acidic or anything. Okay. Um, oh, you know uh, I mean, you don't notice any, like, other than the fact that it's kind of viscous and gooey and sort of, like, sticks to you, um, it doesn't appear to have any other obvious immediate effect. Mm. Anybody have some powerful wind? We could just, like, blow it away, maybe? What's the ground Water? made out of? Uh, it's stone in here. Stone. Dinhorn, mm. you don't have create water, do you? Uh, let me check. Well, I think that's only like, I don't know that it would be quite enough to wash us all away. I'm trying to remember how that one worked. <laughs> I think it was like 30 gallons of water or something like that. that like, it was like create food and water. It was yeah, enough to feed it's, in people. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a lot Um, if you, if you have the spell prepared. I do not. Okay. Oh. Mm -hmm. <sighs> What about press the digitation? Of, I could put like, down a layer well, of bread. That would take forever. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and it's kind of magical stuff, so I don't know that it would work. It would probably I'll, just flow back try to, I'll, from wherever I'll, it's coming I'll from. I'll cast press the digitation on a little puddle and see what happens. <laughs> what if, <laughs> uh, what you, if we... you clear a very tiny area and then immediately, like, the area that's clear gets filled in again? Do you what think it's dangerous, somebody... sequential? You should at least put on boots or something. I do have boots on. Doesn't seem what, to be what do you see? Anything. Is there anything there? Um, I mean, and, yeah, the controls, it's not too far back. It's not so. Yeah, you're, it's just kind of around a couple of small twists. You know, it's so like from, from you should be able to see it Flesh. there on your token. Uh -huh. Nedra keeps trying to angle to see more. I was just going to say, what if we take some of these clean pipes and lay those down and like walk on the pipes? Sequential? Oh, well, he's kind of already in there. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so, uh, after that wasn't a bad idea. So, I'm Sequential, go ahead and make, uh, make an investigation <laughs> check for me. How deep is this stuff? Uh, not, How deep does it look? Not deep. I think even even the deeper puddles are still only maybe an inch or two at the most. It's just kind of that it's got a thin layer all over almost everything. The, now his feet are going to become sentient and, I'll... and start yeah. shooting off different gases. <laughs> all right. So I'll see if I can shut it off. You just yeah. hang out there. So with the 22 sequential, you realize that here's the problem that has caused this flooding that you're seeing is that it was shut down, but the current configuration of the rift and all of the attendant machinery is still generating this stuff. 
Mm. So you could manipulate some of the piping and for example, shut off the, the, the pipe that you saw leaking above or shut off where it's coming out here, but it's gonna, if it's not coming out somewhere, it's gonna start to build in pressure because it's still being generated. So, and that would have to be controlled at the, like the, the geothermal plant controls and, mm -hmm. and the, and specifically like double checking the notebook, um, there is the planar alignment control mm -hmm. that would be the, the principal place where that, um, that effect would be, um, calculated. <clears throat> so that upstairs from here, then, right? Yeah. So, but you, what you also realize is though that if you want to power up the telescope, at least during the time that you are doing that, it will still be producing this material. Okay. Yeah. So the, the reason it's flooding now is because it's still being produced. All right. Well, It's clearly been doing this for a while. So I don't know that there's too much harm in letting it go for a little while longer as we try to use the telescope. Yeah. Did you see um, if there's a place where those things came from? Uh, one other thing that oh. you actually did see in there is that in the corner, there was what looked like uh, a combination between midnight stones and like mud pies. Like somehow what those creatures were doing is trying to take the sludge and like pack it into little stones, but because mm. all they were really had to work with is kind of like, like the mud and the dirt on the floor, like it, it was, they were not getting anywhere with it, but that did seem mm -hmm. to be what they were trying to do. Interesting. So utterly ineffective, except that like, if you had like a little kid just playing in the sludge and trying to make little sludge pies. That's what this looks like. <laughs> we should really try that. We might be able to make something out of this stuff. It's in a primitive state right now, but at least they thought they could do it. Although I don't know why. <laughs> yeah, they didn't seem to be quite all there. Maybe they were workers. Did um did Greg Holm use spirits like that? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, never saw anything like that. Although um it given that you rolled so high previously uh, uh sequential um for the 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 steam spirit it, it you know it does raise you to maybe wonder if it's almost like a similar effect. Right. So maybe they were created out of the memory of how these things were done. Oh, now I really wish I'd scanned their minds. Yeah. You <laughs> suspect that there might be a lot of ambient magical spiritual energy in the environment here. Yeah. This place is amazing. Seems quite charged. Yeah. I wonder what we can do with that. I, I wonder what others can do with that. Up here, we can... As as Sequential goes by, I'm going to press to digitate his feet and, like, get the... <laughs> <Okay>. Whatever's <laughs> left the sledge sure. off. Uh-huh. You do oh. that. So, um... Thank you. Sure. You open that door, and you know that what's in here is the upper ring of the geothermal plant. And so all of you, as you look in there, what you see is an enormous, big, me circular metal... Uh, you know, ring, it seems to be like an enclosure around some kind of a coil and it's open in the center. And you can see uh, through that hole, although it's not obvious on the map here, uh, it descends 40 feet down to an area that looks like there's a lot more pipes and stuff down there, but that this is part of it. And as you kind of enter into it, there is a very low level sort of room sound and you can kind of feel it vibrating through your feet when you stand on the thing 
um, you know sequential that when the plant is operating at full speed, it's usually much more um, noisy and, and fast. It, it seems to be operating at a very low mm-hmm. level right now. Sequential, what's in the Which other door? It's just idling. Yeah. Uh, oh, back down below. Yeah. Um, there, there's a couple of, uh, there's, there's access for the next level down in there. And then, uh, another hallway that goes to some other caves, including one that, uh, Greg Holm told you not to go in. Um, but then it comes around again to just the other end of this, this plant that you're at. So, I mean, you tell me if you want to go that way, but yeah, that's, that's what you know of it. I'm not going anywhere by myself. <laughs> based on what Nedry has anymore. been studying, uh, based on what we've seen so far, mm-hmm. and looking around him, can Nedry make any kind of guess about whether this is actually Denethirian technology, or whether this is something of a of a of this world? I'll say that you've never seen anything like it before, and based on what Sequential said, it sounds like you know. Greg Holm found this site, which was built by the Denotherians. Right. Now he made some of his own like repairs and modifications after the fact, based on what he found here. But mostly this facility is like I said, you've not seen anything like it before, but if it resembled anything, it would be some of these other Denotherian artifacts you've found. This is a pretty amazing, amazing device. Uh, something like this could be used to power all of the major cities. Like Bashan would need only one or two of these to, to run everything. This is amazing. Possible. This is valuable. Yeah. yeah. Sequential, I think you you were probably suddenly reminded it was like, oh yeah, that's because at full power this thing is designed to right. blow up a continent. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so uh, from here, you know that there is another opening to another like control lab up there. And then this area goes around to some of the other caverns, including the um, access for the next level down. <clears throat> so, I th- so I think the controls are up to yeah. the right then, right? Well, yeah, so I'll just go ahead and... Um, yeah. So in there is another room... Uh, that room is uh that room is you you know that uh like again this is not to um it you never really had a full understanding of exactly how it works but what it does is it's part of the mechanism that separates the energy that goes to the midnight stone manufacturer compared to the energy that goes to the plant um, mm-hmm. is in here, but that is not the place that you would need to shut down the, like, if you wanted to shut down that material. Um, yeah. So, so I guess what we're look, really looking to do is to, is to fire up the telescope. Right. Yeah. So I think that, uh, this area, um, basically is, it's, it's almost like a, like a filtration station mm-hmm. where it is taking the like it's receiving the energy f- from the rift and it is separating out part of it which ends up becoming the generation of the sludge mm-hmm. but ultimately it, you know whether this is doing that or not just determines really like where that sludge or energy is going right it's not where you could shut it off it just right. you could have it make more sludge if you wanted for example <laughs> Or you could have more of that energy go into the plant, but you're actually not, like, you know what settings it seems designed to use, but you don't really know, like, what would happen if you had it go either of the other extremes. Because Mm -hmm. the sludge is coming from removing something from the rest of the energy, right? So you theoretically could have it do that more but if you did that less then what happens when all of that's still just in the mix for the geothermal plant? You're not sure. I should call it the Plano thermal plant because it's not just geothermal. <laughs> right. It's coming from the plane of fire. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, so what you know is here that like this control, once it's powered up, 
once like the whole thing is powered up, you could adjust the amount of sludge. Um, like you could direct it essentially direct it into right. the plant or to the midnight stone works. Um, but you don't really have a full understanding of what either of those would mean. Mm -hmm. But yes, if you wanted to power up the telescope, that's not here. Yeah. That's for the primary plant controls, which are on the next level down. Gotcha. So yeah, we need to head down, but we could adjust this later, mm -hmm. though I think, I mean, well, we'll see after we get to the telescope and power mm -hmm. that and everything. Yeah. Seems like the smart thing to do would be to just shut everything down before we leave. Well, maybe we could try producing some Midnight Stone. Or I mean, um, um, you know, there's got to be a way to put it on a, on a bypass, like yeah, it'll just stop accepting the rift energy. Yeah. So as far as the um, like, well, you know that in principle the rift could be closed. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that the like the rift was open when Greg Holm found it and in principle it could be closed and he never did that because he mm -hmm. didn't know how you would ever start it again um but and i and likewise for the midnight stone manufacturer it seems like greg Holm went to some effort to dismantle huge portions of that um mm -hmm. uh but uh nonetheless you think that you have the notes and schematics necessary to at least know what it would look like put back together. Mm hmm Cool, cool. Yeah. So we're going to want to... Yeah. So this cavern just has, like, another, like, pillar in it that you're kind of uh, up against there. And uh, you know that, like, through this door over here is the access to the next level down. And then cool. obviously this this hallway down here um, goes to the other door that you didn't go through. Uh, but it also has, you know, I think you're you're rethinking some of these things. It is also another one of those doors that Greg Holm told you never to go through. Mm -hmm. I would <clears throat> that say, what's in there? So to below, I don't know. That's 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 a forbidden area. I've never gone in there, but. Through this door is how we can go to the controls to make the telescope work. Why was it forbidden? It just is. I'm just not supposed to go in there. What sort of a door is it? Um, I mean, it's uh, it's it's like many of the other doors here, where it's 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 metal, but of some light lightweight metal, so it's not especially sturdy. Um, it does look like it has a keyhole in it. Should we open there it? Were just, you know, there were just some rooms that they said I didn't need to be bothered with and to leave them be. But I wonder maybe what he was hiding from you. should go in there. Is it locked? Uh, you, you try it. It is locked. Ah, it's locked. Yeah, this is right here is where the door is, incidentally. I know oh, somebody who could unlock it <laughs> trying to conserve what spells i have left <laughs> yeah. well for okay. that matter too it doesn't look like the door the door is not like an especially heavy sturdy one it doesn't look like a security door or anything it's it's a closet Maybe for evan you should know. march up and see if you can kick it in <laughs> yeah do it evan. there's no uh, so there's what, no, one uh... thing i'll just say is De evan is actually a dexterity based uh <laughs> uh, well, but he, he did the he did the other the other door. So it's like, true. He's got. I mean, he's willing to give it a shot. <laughs> I mean, I could pick the lock. Yeah, sequential's good at that. <laughs> I could also break the door open. Hmm. I mean, but I mean, what if there's something in there that we don't want to get out? Maybe he should at least try to pick it first. Okay. Is there any label or anything on the door? No. We're near the door. Mm -mm. In fact, I think at you're at, at a glance, um, even a lot of these other doors seem like they've been opened more recently than this one. Doesn't look like it's used very much. 
but go ahead and make a thieves um, tools check if you like uh you know dexterity right. plus proficiency i'm gonna kind of stand around the corner and just like well and then and i watch. think actually it, with a tools check you get right, double with the tools yeah thing, right? double yeah exactly yeah um so this plus six uh okay so what, 21 21 yeah that certainly does it um so you unlock the door and inside is a roughly hewn unfinished cave that has nothing in it except skeletons in manacles what are they humanoid yes that can't be good oh why why are, why are we going in there why would he keep prisoners? Maybe it wasn't him. But he knew they were in there. And why wouldn't he just clean it up? Um, huh. Do they look big, small? Uh, maybe, maybe... They, yeah, like medium, you know, like human sized. Um, I don't quite. Um... Maybe we should talk to one of them. I don't know physiology much. I don't know. We can tell, like, you know, how long they've been dead. Can I estimate? I don't, he, he wouldn't have mm-hmm. kept anybody in here. Yeah. Like a medicine check? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's certainly not very much left of them. Mm-hmm. Definitely uh, not going 26. in that room. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, these are, um, like, you know, you don't have precise tools, but you have a keen eye for these sort of thing. You would guess that these have been in here um, 80 years or more. Which sequential um, you would know to be before Greg Holm got there. Mm-hmm. Can I do um, Eyes of the Grave yeah. to see if there are any undead within 60 feet? Uh, you can, and there are not. Okay. Huh. Yeah. So, yeah, I know he he couldn't have done that, but so I guess. So it had to have been Rupino then. I, yeah, I, I guess. The other one. I mean, yeah, that would put it. I I think, and you know, my guessing at some better time frame. I Are wonder. There any... I wonder if they forced them to have nightmares or something, and you know, how many of them are there? Um, it looks like there was at least three. Three. Maybe they I think did there were have three more, mm. and they were trying to to get rid of them. Like they were trying to help them, and they couldn't. Like maybe they'd gone too far. Let me see. There was Tilitha, Rupino, Bastok, Trandanel, uh, yes, Hestia, yeah. mm-hmm. Selter. That's six. And we've already accounted for Rupino and Trandanel. Didn't they well, say that they locked her away? But that wouldn't that be around the same time as Zinhorn said 80 years, and wasn't 85 years ago? That was when <clears throat> Alistair and um Isild. Isild. Mm. Um, well, they were in Bashan, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe they had something to do with Rupino and all of this. All of this stuff seems to be interconnected. So this yeah. could be more of the 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 academy people potentially. Well, there was or that. They might have I, locked them up here. I mean, I, I told you guys about that little bit of the song that I discovered that was a little bit different, but yeah. like referred to um, like a an old um, group of uh, almost like paladins or something, but some kind of hmm, protectors of mm-hmm. some kind. Um, and I wonder if um, Isild and Alistair were maybe part of that group and maybe these guys were too. Maybe. Zinhorn, could you cast you, Speak with Dead? Yeah, you guys can talk to um, them, right? I could but that would be my last third level spell slot so i'm really low on spells no they're not going yeah, anywhere. yeah i mean like out. you could do it mm-hmm. tomorrow 
That would mean we're staying here an extra day, which I'm okay with. I'm yeah. still exhausted. I, but I'm not going to be walking. So, <laughs> yeah. So if we're going to be traveling it. more, I'm going to have to be a passenger. And well, we're going to have to do something because that rock is still out there, and we're probably going to have to fight it again. Mm. Or at least remove the nightmare. Fight that. And fight that. Yeah. Either way, we'll be fighting stuff. To be thorough, I guess, do you want to check down here before we go? Well, so that just goes to the other door, um, you know, back to the cave where oh, right. about the dritches, which mm -hmm. I'll go cool. ahead and open for you, but... Uh, yeah. so we know. So, they were prisoners. We know, okay. Mm -hmm. I thought there was an, an inter another intermediate room. Okay. Nope. Cool. I wonder why they were here, though. Well, were they I forgotten? Mean... Were they the story, forgotten just like the other two? The storybook said that they locked Tilitha away in a cell she could not escape. I think that's that more like what Rupino and Trenton are locked in, though. But that was before they all, like, before Dinathir, like, got separated. Right? Never because really then you see the, the group of them on the beach at the end of the book having gotten out of the prison, right? Yeah, I mean, that's how that storybook mm -hmm. went. Hmm. Whoever put them in here meant to come back, but didn't. Maybe it was somebody... I know you guys don't want to, but I really think that we should find a way to let Rupino out. Well, we can always bring one of these people back. Hmm. Looking at these skeletons, I'm not so sure that I want to. Well, they wouldn't look like skeletons if they were brought back. I think I'd well, let we Tanglefoot out before him. Before Rupino? What if they were people working with Trandonel? And I mean, like I said, maybe he was just trying to stop Rupino and Urstok from, you know, destroying half the world. It's not necessarily that people are all good or all bad. That's mm -hmm. almost never the case. People are complicated. Mm. Just depends on your point of view. You need to find that library. At least that'll make sense. Yeah, you're sequential. You're you're actually not sure where that is. You know, there's references in the notes, yeah. but it must be in some it portion of this complex. That, area. Yeah. Are there any more doors you're not allowed to go? I mean, maybe it's yeah, there's a few doors, and who knows how deep they go? You know, so, they could go to a whole other part of a com. You know. Yeah, there's a there's a door on the next level down that was forbidden. There was also the you know that there is a door to his little apartment on the ground floor of the observatory that you weren't supposed to go in. Um, but you had seen through the doorway in there. It's just a little tiny room with his bed and stuff in it. Although he did spend a lot of time in there with the door closed. <laughs> he was lonely. <laughs> <laughs> you need privacy with your thoughts once in a while. All these mechanical clank is walking around. He had dreams to study. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Good dreams. Uh, we did actually go in that room, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we got we his did. dream journal. That's, so. Yeah, it's where he found the dream journal. Oh, and so that was a room that sequential? sequential was not supposed to uh, go in. Yeah, he he wasn't with us yet. He was. Yeah, he was still diagnostic mode in the box. Yes, but in any case, looking through the doorway where you are right there, there's a set of stairs that go down, and you can. Continue. Do we want to go down more? Yes, we have to. Yeah, that's how we. Yeah, I think we have to. Okay. Hopefully we don't run into any more monsters. It seems no, unlikely. I'll keep my distance. Okay. Tell me about it. Well, let me uh, let me go ahead and move you to the new map, and I'll uh, put your tokens on there. Somebody find a light switch. <laughs> oh wait, I can see in the dark. Mm-hmm. I'm going to burn another first level spell to heal myself. Okay. I can do. Oh, wait, I can't. I don't have any more first level spells. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, I only have there two spell slots left. So, um, 
<laughs> so as you go down the stairs here, you're in a small room where there's a couple of continual flame uh, braziers, which are essentially it's the same spell. It's just bigger. But it, it is a bigger flame that's brighter, has much more of an obvious like flame-like appearance, but it does not give off heat. And then there's a you know narrow, narrow hallway with a door that, uh, sequential, you know, this leads directly to the bottom of that ring that you guys were all standing on. That's on the lower level of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, you're heading through there, I guess, right? I'll go ahead and open the door yeah. here. Mm -hmm. yep. So uh, you here's a bunch of pipes, and uh, you know that there's a control panel right up at the top here. That is, it is primarily a fine control um, uh, to minimize vibration when the drive the plant is running faster than it currently is. So it's like not really an issue right now, but mm -hmm. once it's spun up, it can potentially vibrate unless these controls are set carefully. Uh, so there's obviously a passage um, to the south uh, there uh, that continues that way with no door. Uh, there's also a door right here. So these are pipes which are running along the floor or? Um, in... Both. Consider it like like this whole space is kind of full of those pipes. Like you could and they move haven't through been it. Dismantled. But... Right. Yeah. These are all. These are all still um, going. Intact. And in fact, and actually, the... a lot of them are are hot. Like they're, they've still got like steam and power going through them. But then again, you I the... mean, you know that this whole thing, like it's idling right now, but it is not cold. Mm -hmm. It is not off. Yeah. And this would be the lower level of the big hole we saw above. Yes, exactly. Yep. So when you were standing on that ring and you looked down, you were looking down into this space. So Zaline, you're by a little doorway there and sequential, you could say, you know that that leads to a storeroom, which you believe has access to some old tunnels that, um, that Greg Holm didn't use. Um, so like you weren't forbidden to go there. He just said he didn't keep anything in there. It's just like just yeah. tunnels. Some unexplored tunnels. It might go to the, the Yeti, which I don't want to bother ever again. Or it could go probably to probably much creepy crawlies in there. Probably a much older part of the facility. Maybe. Maybe mm. even things that Greg Holm hadn't found yet. Yeah, he he did not explore in there, and I never really did. He was busy. Yeah. So um, there are more steam leaks as you move s south here. So like this whole area is kind of like. It's not quite as extreme as that other room. Like you could walk through it without taking damage, but it is, you know, it's very sauna-like in there because there's just lots of escaping steam. But the right ambiance, this place would be really nice. <laughs> so nice play something, Lynn. Yeah. Play something nice. <laughs> so yes, yeah, sequential, you know this passageway goes to the big pool that is essentially it is, you know. The plant, you know, like it is the it's the pool that is heated by the energy from the rift and then transmitted uh, through everything. So that's that's what that way goes. But there's also a door. The door that's on this level that you weren't supposed to go through is, is also down that way. Come on, sequential. <laughs> we got to go open more doors. You're not allowed to open. <laughs> All right. But it's dark. I can't see anything. I can't see. I'll hold my hand. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, it, it is. Dancing so, lights. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. I'll, uh... Double dancing lights everywhere. Okay. So uh, uh, the dancing lights you can like bring with you, right? Yeah. Yeah. They're. they're um, uh, yeah. How about how about this? Um, uh, just for the sake of um, it making a bit more sense, what I'm actually going to do is is make your token give off light, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, oh, do we have Evan? I have. Yeah, he's uh, right there. Okay. Um, I can't see next him. Next to Lynn. So I can cast I'm... light. Lynn... I couldn't move him. Um. 
Yeah, I'm making uh, Lynn's token give off some light here. Um, yeah. And then I, I could do that to Zinhorns as well. If... It was me. I... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, blue. Ooh. Yeah. Shiny. Yeah. Very blue. Ooh, water. Mm hmm um, and so the water in, like, you can tell being above this water that it is, it's, it's boiling water. Yeesh. Um, yeah. And uh, you can see, though, that the pipes and these, like, these turbines in it seem to be directing a lot of the heat into the pipes. And so it isn't quite as steamy above it as it might be if it were not you know, more of a machine for this, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, you could definitely get the sense that like, yeah, like you, you don't want to take a bath in this water right now. Nope. 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 <laughs> nope. Um, so yes, the door, uh, in question is over here. There's nothing at the, at the South end. It's just wall there. Um, but what I'm going to say is as you're kind of taking a look at the, this door and you're in this, uh, this room, uh, you hear a sudden sloshing in the water. <clears throat> so. Uh, oh no! <laughs> and that's where we're going to end for tonight's session. No. <laughs> I'll just panic, run right out of here again. <laughs> so quick sequential pick. There's a no poll. Mm -hmm. It's another one. Uh, all right. So yes, that is uh, that is. Uh, oops, that's all for uh, tonight's session. Uh, we, we will return, uh, next week for more adventure on so many levels. Do we have everybody next week? I know we're getting to that <laughs> time of year. It's questionable, but so yeah. Many levels, yes. All right. yeah, I'll let you know. Yep. <laughs> Wonderful. So, uh, thank you everybody for listening and or watching. Uh, we hope you're enjoying the adventure and we will be back for next week for more adventure on so many levels. So, so many, many levels. levels. So many. levels.